IRAs and 401ks, which one makes you more money? Why do people choose an IRA over 401k? Why do people choose a 401k over an IRA? Which one is the best? And which ones could be costing you money? Let's dive into some IRA and 401k basics, what you need to know about both, and what they really don't want you to know. IRAs and 401ks explained starting now. I'm gonna cover these questions in just a sec. But first, I have a question for you. If you have a retirement account, why did you choose the type that you have? Is it because someone told you that was the right thing to do? Is it because that's the only type your employer offered? Or was it because that's just what everyone else had so it made sense? Or better yet, was it what your financial advisor influenced you to get? And the most common that I see, I went to this custodian. I went to Equity Trust because I wanted to be able to invest this way and this is all they had to offer. I went to Vanguard and I wanted to be able to do this with my retirement dollars and this is all they had to offer. That is the most common reason. It's options. These are the only options that I had available to me. I want you to keep in mind why you chose the account type you did as we go through this video. And those of you who do not have a retirement account should listen even closer because what I'm about to tell you could save you thousands of dollars. You see, nine times out of 10, when I get on the phone with a potential client, they're calling me because they want a self-directed IRA. And when I ask the simple question as to why, they don't know why. They're unsure. They're not clear as to why they want a self-directed IRA versus anything else, nor do they realize that there are other options out there. So the truth is, they just don't know, but they just don't know. See, it's hard to do these things if you don't have the tools. And even worse, if you don't have the tools, there are people preying on you to take advantage of you because you don't have these tools. My goal is to close that gap and I'm starting with foundational topics, but I'll give you a hint as to where I'm going with this. Do you realize today's standard retirement accounts are not designed to produce income? What do I mean by that? You should question that. When you hear people are retiring and all of a sudden they have to downsize, you know, they're moving from the house that they were in because we don't need all of that space. So we're moving into something smaller. Nine times out of 10, it's not because they don't need the space. It's because they can't afford the space. Why is that? Why is that even a thing? And most of the time that downsize conversation is coming to them from their financial advisor. My question is always, if my financial advisor knows that I don't have enough to retire, why am I just learning about this when it's time for me to retire? That should be an upfront conversation. We should know well in advance what that number is. And if we're not on a path to get there, I would expect my financial advisor to provide me with the tools to be able to make other decisions. Maybe in order for me to get to my goal, I need to leave this custodian. But your financial advisor is not gonna tell you that because they will lose their license if they did so. Wouldn't you wanna know prior to retirement age whether or not you were on the right path? Or better yet, would you at least want to know what is the right path? A 401k is a qualified pension plan, whereas an IRA is an individual retirement account. They have very similar rules, but they are very different products. The similar rules include the disqualified persons rule, prohibited transaction rules, RMD rules, the required minimum distribution rules. I usually struggle getting that out. And then most importantly, investment rules. So regardless of whether you're talking about an IRA or 401k or a self-directed IRA or a self-directed 401k, the investment rules are the same, meaning they're both allowed or all four of those different products are allowed to invest into the same thing. Your limitations are usually put upon you by your employer or your custodian. But all in all, the products themselves are allowed to invest into the same things. In addition, they have very different fee structures associated with them. One of them, the fee structure benefits you. The other, the fee structure benefits your financial advisor and or your custodian. As mentioned, an IRA is an individual retirement account, and therefore it's limited to one per person. Whereas a 401k, you're allowed to commingle funds between spouses, between co-owners. So what does that mean? With an IRA, each spouse has to have their own account, which means double the cost to create them and also double the fees associated with each account. So you're paying twice. And if an IRA owner wants checkbook control over their IRA funds, which is just a long way of saying if they wanted a self-directed IRA, we have to incorporate an LLC under the IRA. What does this mean to you? This means your IRA has to create an LLC using the funds within an IRA. And the reason I'm saying this and the reason I'm saying it slowly 
is because a lot of people think when I say we have to create an LLC, they assume they can use their personal funds to create this LLC, and you cannot. Your IRA has to create an LLC using the funds of the IRA. What does that mean? It now introduces LLC fees that your IRA now has to pay. And so now, in order to have checkbook control over your IRA funds, your IRA has to transfer funds into this LLC. And then you take the EIN number of the LLC and you open up a checking account. So what has happened? You have moved funds from your IRA into your LLC. Your LLC has, using the IN number, your LLC has now opened up a checking account. Your IRA funds has moved from your IRA account into your LLC, where you now have checkbook control over all of your IRA dollars. But in opening up a checking account, what else have we introduced? Well, now we have introduced a custodian. And when you introduce a custodian, which is just a fancy word for bank, when you introduce a bank, you're introducing now custodial fees. So now your IRA has not only LLC fees associated with opening up a checkbook controlled IRA, but your IRA also now has custodial fees because we now have a checking account to contend with. So now let me pause for a minute. As I mentioned before, most have only heard of a self-directed IRA. And the main reason they've only heard of a self-directed IRA is because they're really very easy to create. And because it requires a custodian to have checkbook control over your IRA dollars, that means the bank can now get paid too because it brings in custodial fees. Now, mind you, these fees are not massive. For instance, we create thousands of self-directed IRAs. These fees are not really noticeable when you're dealing with large investments, right? The reason I'm sharing this with you is because I want, you, I want to make sure you understand the full picture because a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't realize the challenges associated with having a self-directed IRA. Case in point, they also don't understand the benefits of a 401k or even some of the challenges associated with it. So my purpose for sharing all of this with you is so that you have the full picture. But for those of you who chose an IRA and know why you chose an IRA, you know all of this stuff already. Do you others still have your reason in mind? If so, make sure you don't lose it. And lastly, an IRA is limited to the amount that you're able to contribute. See, the contribution limits for an IRA are 6,000 and 7,000. So let me ask you, how many of you can comfortably retire after putting away six to $7,000 per year? I'll wait. So how is a 401k any different? How is it any better? A 401k is a qualified pension plan and the contribution limits are quite a bit higher as it relates to a 401k. Contribution limits for a 401k are 195 and 26,000 depending on your age. And in addition, 401k is allowed to match. That's also called profit share. You are also allowed to contribute an additional 25% of your income up to $36,000. So $19,500 plus $36,000 or $26,000 plus $36,000. Based off contribution limits alone, which one would allow you to get closer to retirement? In addition, a 401k is its own beast. And let me, let me remind you, when I'm talking about a 401k, I am also talking about a self-directed 401k. They are pretty much the same. The difference between the two is control, and we'll get into that. A 401k, which is a qualified pension plan, comes with, it already has its own EIN number. And therefore, this EIN number allows for you to create your checking account. So the fact that your 401k has its own EIN number, it eliminates the need for an LLC in order to have checkbook control. And because you're able to co-mingle funds within a plan, meaning you're able to have co-ownership, those contribution limits are multiplied by two. And let's not forget about match. Match is just another term for profit sharing. What that allows is that allows you, in addition to your normal contribution limits, you're able to contribute an additional 25% of what's in your plan up to $36,000 times two. That's per co-owner. You are the trustee of the 401k, which means you're the sole decision maker. And because you're the sole decision maker, you're not required to have a custodian. If you're not required to have a custodian, then there's an opportunity to eliminate custodial fees. And if your qualified pension plan has its own EIN number, which allows it to open up a checking account, that means you don't have to have an LLC supported under the retirement account, right? So you've just eliminated LLC fees. And again, this is times two. Because you're able to commingle funds in one account, that means you've literally cut those potential fees in half by being able to have the same account. See, as co-owners of the plan, you and your spouse have equal say 
equal check writing ability, equal decision making within this account, which means you have equal control over the amount within the account. And as you're commingling funds, it allows you for a much larger pool to be able to invest with. Pair that with an IRA, again, individual retirement account, you can have one, your spouse can have one, your contribution limits are, are lower. In order to have checkbook control, they both require an LLC, they both require custodial fees, and in addition, you can't commingle funds. It's a big difference here. And I just wanna make sure something is clear. When I say checkbook control, what does that mean? So whether we're talking about a self-directed IRA or self-directed 401k, we're talking about checkbook control over those retirement dollars. What does that mean? If there is an investment that you want to take advantage of on Monday, if there's a property across the street that you have enough money in your retirement account to be able to take action on, it's as simple as writing a check on Monday. That investment can be yours by Monday afternoon. It is not calling someone asking if this is something that you can do. It's not a transfer of funds electronically. There's not some delay in response or some delay in your ability to access those funds immediately. It is as simple as writing a check. A lot of people are very unclear as it relates to that. So let's also pause here. I wanna make sure you fully understand what I mean when I say no custodian is required. And it's exactly how it sounds. A bank is not necessary to have a self-directed 401k. But let's be realistic. Wouldn't you want your 401k dollars sitting in a bank? Of course you would. So if a custodian is not required, what do we do? What type of bank do we use? So I wanna spend a little time on this subject also. So I'm gonna digress a little bit from talking about an IRA and a 401k. I wanna to talk to you about custodians. And here's another piece that seems to be made intentionally unclear to most of the potential clients that I encounter. You see, there are different types of custodians. And from our perspective, there's three that we mainly encounter. And what's a custodian? They're the ones that only allow you to invest in what they have to sell. Any of you have a Fidelity, a Morgan Stanley, or a Transamerica as your custodian? See, they may even tell you that you have a self-directed account. What they're actually saying to you is you are able to invest in the 15, 30, 75 mutual funds and stocks that they offer. My suggestion, go to one of these custodians with your personal and or employer plan and ask a simple question. Hey, can I invest in land or real estate using my IRA or 401k or TSP or 403b or whatever plan you might have? And let's see what they say. And please let me know. I would love to read the response in the comments below. And then there are those custodians who allow you to invest in what you want, but you continually pay the price for it. These custodians like your equity trust, IRA services, or even some of the big banks like a Bank of America or Wells Fargo. So here's what I mean. You have an IRA and in this case, a self-directed IRA, and you wanna invest in real estate or some other non-traditional investment. They tell you yes, and more importantly, they structure your account so that you have checkbook control over your retirement dollars. But then you go to take action, and you learn that in order for you to take action on this opportunity, they have to approve the opportunity. You have to send in the entire portfolio and wait for the custodian's approval. So just think, as an investor, you see this opportunity that you wanna take advantage of. You've done your due diligence. You've done your investigation. You're now prepared to take action. But before you can take action, your custodian has to approve the steps in which you've already taken. Is there a sense of urgency to get this opportunity complete as high as yours? You would hope so, but it may not be. And nine times out of 10, investment opportunities like these can't wait because there are other competitors. There's other people waiting to take advantage. So just think of that as an investor. You see an opportunity, you're properly structured, you're ready to take action, but you're waiting on some bank who's not as invested as you, who doesn't have your sense of urgency, but you're waiting on them to get back to you as to whether or not this is a viable transaction. Man, you gotta be kidding me. I have a problem with that. Many deals are lost like this because time is of an essence. And the third type of custodian, which is the custodian that we use for our self-directed 401k plans, are called passive custodians. Note, any active custodian, which are the previous two that we've just discussed, any active custodian can be a passive custodian if they choose to. We've developed several close relationships with many major banks across the country. To name a few, Comerica Bank, Titan Bank, and Solera Bank, and they service our clients both nationally and internationally. But bottom line is we can work with any bank. See, these passive custodians charge zero custodial fees, zero custodial maintenance fees, and they do not interfere with our clients and their ability to be able to invest in what they want. The role of a passive custodian is to maintain your retirement account agreement, 
process applications, receive and record income from assets held inside of your retirement account. The bottom line, the passive custodians we use are Fidelity without being nickel and dime with fees, Bank of America without being limited to what they have to offer, and it's equity trust without having to wait on their approval in order to take action. To sum it all up, an IRA, and in turn, a self-directed IRA, requires an active custodian. There's really no way around it. And why is that? Because in truth, an IRA is just a glorified savings account. Because of the relationships we develop, the active custodians we use for our self-directed IRAs charge minimal custodial maintenance fees. A 401k, and in this case, a self-directed 401k, does not require a custodian. We use a passive custodian that charges no custodial fees, and our structure allows us to eliminate transaction fees as well as asset-based holding fees. No red tape, no waiting to make a decision, no need to explain yourself. It's as simple as you invest in what you want when you want, and I mean that. And lastly, UBIT, unrelated business income tax. Wait a minute, we did cover UBIT, right? See, UBIT only applies to an... I we didn't cover UBIT. <laughs> Are you aware that UBIT is a 35 to 37% tax on your profit if you leverage real estate inside of your retirement account? Are you aware of that? See, UBIT will make your head explode, but we're not gonna get into that this time. I'ma just let that sit there. The moral of the story here is UBIT applies to an IRA. UBIT does not apply to a 401k. We'll dig into the details of UBIT what it means, where it comes from, and how it impacts you when I dig into the basics of an IRA. I'm gonna break down an IRA, where it comes from, how they started, how Roth came about, the whole nine. And I will save UBIT for that. So I'd like to go back to my original question. For those of you with an IRA or 401k, do you better understand why you have them now? Do you better understand the differences between the two? Would you have liked to have had a bit more information before you made that decision? Would you like to change that decision? Did you have all of the necessary information to make the correct decision? Would you do the same all over again? For my investors, those of you who invest specifically in real estate and those non-real estate investors, does this better help you narrow down what that decision might be? Which one is better? Which one costs you more money? I think the answer is clear. Again, my goal is just to open this world to you. Tell your friends, tell your family, click, like, and subscribe. But most importantly, share. Share this with at least one other person. I will demystify the mysterious and I will simplify what those in control want you to believe is complicated, because it's really not. It's just that we don't know what we don't know. So take this journey with me. Subscribe to my channel so that you're notified as new content is produced. If I've covered something that's unclear and you would like a better explanation, please comment below, let me know. Check out my prior video where I dug into some of the frequently asked questions related to 401k loans. What's the interest rate? How do I go about it? Do I have to pay the loan back? What are the taxes and what can it be used for? And lastly, what happens if I don't pay the loan back? As always, I'm Donnell. I thank you for your time and your investment in me. Until next time.